See, that's why I don't like that. It's a two years of time.
Okay, so that's a, a basic web page I've just created there. HTML, open HTML close, head open, head close, body open, body close. Now inside the body, you can put uh, JavaScript all over the place. You could, put, you could put JavaScript in the head, which is loaded as the page loads by the browser. Or you could put the JavaScript in the body. Uh, and it actually interprets it on the page as like a, an active element in the page. So with this, this, in this particular instance, we're going to put it in the, in the body. So first I'm just going to write out stuff that we need on our body. So we're going to say, please, uh, click the button and just uh, to see just type in the HTML if it's day time outside. outside. This is for people that are really hardcore uh, hard coders and have been outside for probably about two weeks. So they actually have this day time on the outside. And you always have an open and closed HTML at the top. Um, uh, you can add something in. A lot of people will do this thing with HTML and they do like a doc type definition where it's like this. Oh, sorry, uh, type on the wrong keyboard. Um, and and uh, like. I, I generally don't recommend that because it, it, like, if you get that slightly wrong, then it kind of messes up the page. And that's, a, that's what's called the DTD, it defines the page type. Um, but we won't do that now, we'll just keep it simple, we'll just do it the way, the way I'm doing it, and then we hopefully won't have a text in the middle. We also need a button, um, and the button is a, an HTML element. You, there's two different ways to do a button in HTML. You can either do an input, input which is type button, or we can use the button um, you use the button code, but I think this has been depreciated in HTML5, which means that eventually it will just disappear and it won't be used at all. But at the moment, I think it still works pretty well. So if I um, if I save that, I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to call it uh, button dot HTML. There we go. And if we find it on the if we find it on the desktop here it is somewhere it's disappeared. Right, it's opening it in Safari because that's obviously the, uh, the default browser on here. I would probably prefer it in Chrome because I like the uh, bug testing Chrome. Yeah, the button uh, is kind of playing a bit, a bit funky in that. Let's just try opening it. Just save that in Chrome. Put some in the body. Open with. Come on. Right. Okay. Just save that. Uh, do something you should do. Dot HTML. Oh, it's still doing it like that. What's what's wrong? A what? We've got to put text in it. You're very, very true. So let's just put some text, like try it, or, or find find out now. Some some great marketing ploy, some some call to action. Buy buy your stuff now. Find the, find the time now. If you keep building web pages, you'll discover that this is kind of more important than the design is, is putting the words in the right order so you can actually read stuff. So right now we've got some text and we've got a button, which is says it doesn't do anything. Okay? So let's go back to our code here. Uh, this is markup really, it isn't quite code yet. Now underneath that button I'm going to start writing, uh, I'm going to put insert a script tag. And again, you can always define this as like type JavaScript text slash JavaScript, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm trying to do it the light version. I'm just just packing in code. We can do all the, uh, the, 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 the actual specifics and exact ones later if you learn that sort of stuff. But right now, I'm just going to get this script tag in here. Now, everything in the script tag here is, is now going to be it's now going to be JavaScript code. So we've got. Uh, can you everyone read this? Okay. Can you see it? Is anyone struggling? Just kind of wait. Okay. Because like, I struggle to see it from right there. 
So, HTML open, HTML close. Everyone gets that. Head open, head close. Body open, body close. And in between, we've got some stuff. The first thing we did was some words. And then we did a button. And then we did a script. And everything in between these two scripts is JavaScript code. Everyone gets that so far. And this is the easy way to do JavaScript code on your page. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is define a function, and it's going to call, uh, be called uh, daytime. Okay, and uh, what this function is, is I'll highlight it on here. Uh, so, so it says, okay, set up a function, that's the first thing, so that's what function says. Now we have a function. The function is called daytime, and you'll notice that I've written day in lowercase, t in uppercase, and then ime, so daytime, but the t is uppercase. And that's kind of like a standard in a lot of programming languages. The, the, the first word is lowercase, but then the first letter of the second word is uppercase, to sort of show that it's a new word. And the actual lowercase and uppercase is actually very important, so you must make sure that you, you, you always use the same lowercase uppercase format every time you use it. Usually, good question. If, usually, if it's just one word, uh, you just do all lowercase. You won't worry about uppercase. Good question over there. What's up there? It's a curly brace. It's uh, after the two circular brackets. I'll zoom in. Okay. So that's, uh, that's open curly brace and then underneath is closed curly brace. So basically that says everything between these two curly braces, that's going to be our set of instructions that's all going to make up this function. Okay? Now, there's a reason why you have this function, and, and you might not understand properly what function is, but if you do maths, you'll, you'll start to learn more about this at a certain level. If you do Carly Academy, you'll probably learn even quicker. But, um, basically, a function is a way to set up a set of instructions that can be repeated in lots of places. So everything we write in here, you're going to be able to write it here once, and then you can call it all over the place. So you can say, up here, do it over here. You can say, do it over this part because you do it over this part of the page. You can do it everywhere, but you've only got one set of instructions in one place. And that, that's a form of what's called abstraction. It allows you to take something that needs to be repeated lots of times, and, and put it in one place, and, then just, and, and it's like a checklist that you might go through in the morning. You know, you go through a like, checklist in the morning, get, go and get washed, go and brush your teeth, go and have breakfast. That's your checklist, that's your function in the morning. Okay, you, have a, you have a morning routine function. I started trying to uh, code that into this video so that people can understand how long you Okay, so now we're going to set up a variable inside this function. It's called var x equals and just blank. And there's two interesting things here about JavaScript. Number one, you don't actually need to put in var, but if you don't, it can cause you problems. Number two, you don't actually need to put in the semicolon, but it causes you problems if you don't. So, starting now, I'll try and do some good habits and always put, uh, always put a semicolon at the end of every instruction line. And you'll kind of see as we go along where the semicolons are needed, but it's usually needed at the end of every line of set instructions. Okay, so, so instruction one is create a new variable. Now, does anyone know variables from school? No, not really. Okay. Okay, so, um, uh, a variable is something that allows you to define something that can be changed. So, what's a good way? Can someone give me a good example? If anyone knows variables, I'm just trying to think of a good example. Variable. So, so you, you create a variable like this, it's equal to dog. Okay, so, so this is equal to uh, a type of dog, right? Now, at, at one point, depending on what you're talking about, the dog could be a Dalmatian. So, 
now x is equal to a Dalmatian. But then you can change it later on and say, well, actually, x is um, a, a Labrador. And I'm now talking about Labrador, so I'm talking about that on the screen. That's sort of a, a, not a great way of explaining, but it sort of explains it. Oh, sorry. That's sort of a, like a way of showing the same thing, this thing, can be changed to represent whatever you need it to represent at a time. Okay, does that make sense? Maybe? Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep explaining and you will sort of see how it works as we go along. And it's some, a variable is something that changes over time. It, it allows you to, at one point, it represents one, at another point, it represents two, at another point, it might represent another number like a million or something. So at the moment, it just represents a blank space in here, in between these two quotation marks. Okay. Now I'm going to do another variable called equal to time. And uh, we're going to get, we're just going to instantiate a new object called uh, date. Dot, and we're going to get the, um, the subclass called hours. And uh, we've now got a, a, a new variable time that represents the current time on your computer. And this is, a, this is a function of JavaScript that allows you to get this, uh, allows you to get this, um, this time. So this is sort of built into JavaScript. This is something that's already been built in JavaScript to get the, the, the time as it is now. Oh, my computer's gone off. Has it? No, it's still there. Okay. Yes. Okay, so good question. Okay. Now I'm going to explain something here that maybe would be a little bit complicated, but just try and see if you go and see if it makes any sense. Sorry. So this this thing here is what's called an inbuilt function in the language. Or every language has stuff that it's already got in it, right? But it's got it's been built in. But you need to what's called instantiate it, which means actually set it up right now in this place and time for this person. Because you don't want just any old time, you want this person's time. So it's called calling an object. So you are calling a new date object, and from that object you want to pick out the current get hours time. Okay, so does that kind of make sense? Why it's, what's actually going on there? It's instantiating a new date object from the language. That's the, the complicated explanation. But effectively it's saying we need this piece variable needs to be set. What this equal means set it to a new date object, which and we want in particular the hours from that date, date object. Okay. Does that kind of make a bit of sense, maybe? Yeah, just reading it. Okay. So now we're going to do a really cool if statement. Okay, if then statement. If time is less than 20 hundred hours, then, and we do these brackets here, we could even do this, show that it's kind of, that's just, I'm just indenting it to make it look nice, this is what programmers do sometimes, we don't have to do this. Okay, so if time is less than 20, then do this, which is set x equal to good day, or it is good, it, it, it is daytime. Oh, and you know what I've forgotten? What have I forgotten there? Does anyone know what I've forgotten at the end there? Semicolon. Semicolon, okay, good. So basically, that's a, that's an instruction. We're setting now. We, we set up x as blank up above, but now we're changing x to be equal to it is now daytime. And you need the quotation marks because that's what's called a string in quotation marks. Has anyone ever seen Austin Powers? Yes. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this button to call that function that we've just written. Okay. 
also, I'm going to uh, type a thing called onClick, which is a, 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 an attribute in, in this tag, and I'm going to set it to daytime. And, and what do I have to remember at this point? What's, what's missing here, do you think? Right here. Anyone, anyone, have a little guess? Capital letter T, awesome. Okay. Okay, so we've set all of that up, so I'm going to save this and run it. Now, does anyone know what's going to happen right now? Okay, so it pretty much is the same, and if we click the button, still nothing happens. And this, like, this is quite a complex question, but why is nothing happening right now? Say again? No programming. The program isn't doing anything to put out. It's not printing anything. It's not printing anything. Awesome. So basically, what we did here is all this program does is just set x equal to its daytime now. But it doesn't actually print that out anywhere. We need to tell the program to actually display that somewhere. Okay? So we're going to make a place up here for it to display. Um, in fact, um, yeah, we're going to put it up here. And I'm going to, I'm going to set up a, a paragraph. Have you ever seen keys before? I'm going to set the paragraph uh, with an ID equal to uh, daytime again, or, or maybe something uh, uh, a show date. Okay. A bit better. Okay, so what I've done there is I've created a paragraph, I've set it with an attribute ID equal to show date. That's an ID, it's a reference so that we can, call, we can um, uh, do play, play around with it later. And then inside that I've just put some text, daylight is currently uncertain, but we don't know for sure yet whether there's daylight outside. In our little uh, underground basement where people have got us locked up coding programs. And then I've closed the paragraph off with a, a forward slash and a P. Okay, now, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write some code underneath this if statement. James Wilson might be here. The hero himself might be in the room shortly. James Wilson, do you know who James Wilson is? The founder of the Dojo. You don't know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he said he's going to be on the bus. Hopefully he won't fall off the skateboard this time. Okay, so I'm, this is what I'm going to write down here, and this, this location here, and it's very uh, important where you put it. Okay, so I'll explain a little bit about what's going on here. Sorry. So, um, we, we've got a function which starts here and ends here, okay? Then we set the variable uh, x equal to just a blank string, so it's just, it's just nothing at the moment. Then we set another variable called time, which is equal to a new uh, uh, date time, which is set on your computer, so it's equal to the current date, the current time. Then we do an if statement. If the time, which we've set up here, is currently less than 20, then in here, set x, which is currently blank, change that to it is now daytime. Otherwise, x would just be the same, uh, just stay empty. And, that, and then what we do is we do a document uh, underneath that if statement. So the if statement starts here and ends here. 
Underneath this if statement, we say, okay, go to the document, which is the web page, get the element by ID, and this is a funny one because it's, it's lowercase, uppercase E, uppercase B, and then I for some strange reason is lowercase. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. Um, get the element by ID, and we say, get the element by ID up here, get show date, put that in, that's where it's hunting for it, so it's, it, it finds this paragraph here, set the inner, this inner HTML to be equal to X, which is this being set here. So it's either blank or it's been set to it is now data. So it will be one or the other. Okay? And finish it all with a semicolon. And if we do all of that, it should work. But I'm gonna I'm gonna see now. We might usually have both seen with these things. Ah, so it's, it's giving you nil. So let's just see what I get if I... Oh, let's see. Let's just see what I get. Josh, you put the... Okay, you know what I'm going to do? Is it, is, do I have to get rid of this... Um, do I have to get rid of this, this in, the, in the HTML here? Does it? I thought it had to be lowercase, but I could be wrong. Yeah? Awesome! It works. Palm, thank you very much. The I actually has to be capital. I was talking the S. So if you do that code, then you should get this response. So you load up the page, it says daylight is currently uncertain. You click the button, it finds the time, and it says it's actually now daytime.